Welcome to the third annual India Leadership Conclave and Indian Affairs Business Leadership Awards 2012 presented by India's most analytical news magazine Indian Affairs a division of Network 7 Media Group which has been at the forefront of championing the cause of a free economy, robust system and independent platform to voice the opinions. It's been 20 years since Manmohan Singh opened up the Indian economy and freed up Indian entrepreneurship. India is on the move again. We shall make the future happen. Sir, I've come to the end of my day. I am prepared to meet their onslaught. As the poet said, Sir Feroshi ki ta manna, ab hamare dil mein hai, dekhna hai, zor kitna, bazu hai, khatal mein hai. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take an overview of historical perspectives that is filled with high voltage, endless saga of our momentous journey as India is preparing to claim its position to be the emerging superpower. An ancient civilization of science and innovation, a fundamental faith in human progress, this is the sturdy foundation upon which you have built ever since that stroke of midnight when the tricolor was raised over a free and independent India. And despite the skeptics who said this country was simply too poor or too vast or too diverse to succeed, you surmounted overwhelming odds and became a model to the world. Instead of slipping into starvation, you launched a green revolution that fed millions. Instead of becoming dependent on commodities and exports, you invested in science and technology and in your greatest resource, the Indian people. History, despite its wrenching pain, cannot be unlived. But if faced with courage, need not be lived again. Accountability might seem like an abstract concept until entitles like Wall Street, tobacco companies, Endron, automobile companies, corrupt politicians, governmental regulators and even church officials are exposed. Too many of these entities view ordinary people as members of constituencies, audiences, congregations or as customers who won't hold them accountable. They believe we will not make them suffer the consequences of their actions or inactions because we are too busy enjoying our blessed status. The negative and ineffective leadership of some authorities is endured and often ignored. If the masses don't act to hold them or their actions accountable, little will be done to maintain the blessings we enjoy. The power potential of ordinary people must be enhanced. We don't have to react with violence to hold people and institutions accountable. There are many ways to express our satisfaction or dissatisfaction within the boundaries of our freedom and good taste. We forfeit our blessings if we fail to participate actively. States are not moral agents, people are and can impose moral standards on powerful institutions. The basic idea which runs right through modern history and modern liberalism is that the public has got to be marginalized. The general public is viewed as no more than ignorant and meddlesome outsiders, a bewildered herd. A close scrutiny of Indian brands post the free economy era will reveal that large number of players in diverse sectors have made their mark in their respective fields, notwithstanding the hurdles and governmental regulation from time to time. Today, Brand India is globally accepted as the world market is looking at India as the most preferred destination for collaboration, partnerships and investments. India is a land of billion opportunities and not a billion problems. In the last 20 years, the country has added a trillion dollars of output. The last decade has seen India emerge stronger on the world map, especially during the global financial meltdown when the country weathered the crisis, much to the admiration of the world. India today stands poised at the threshold of change. 
India today has emerged as one of the decisive nations shaping the contours of the world economy. Consistently charting a growth path over the last few years, Brand India is an idea whose time has truly arrived. Today, the triumph of Brand India is visible in almost all fields. With some aggressive cross-border acquisitions, India has been rewriting the global business equations. India has established its leadership in IT and knowledge-based industries globally and has the fastest growing population of workers and consumers. With huge investments in infrastructure development on the anvil, India today is a preferred investment destination. It has one of the world's most rapidly growing markets and today Indian products and services are recognized for their quality all over the world. Against the backdrop of the above backgrounder where brand India matters most, Indian Affairs, India's first pink magazine is hosting the high profile and India's most eagerly awaited leadership event. The third annual India Leadership Conclave and Indian Affairs Business Leadership Awards 2012 on Friday 6th April at Hotel Lalit, Bangalore, India. Keeping its tradition of bringing the finest think tanks of the society from the different diverse sectors like the much acclaimed two past annual events, the first annual India Leadership Conclave in Delhi and the second annual India Leadership Conclave in Mumbai. Now the stage is set for the third one under the theme Brand India, the emerging superpower, limitless leadership, limitless possibilities. Attempt to reach out to the leading voices in agriculture, automobiles, auto components, aviation, education and training, engineering, financial services, food industry, insurance, IT and ITEs, manufacturing, media and entertainment, retail, science and technology, banking, biotechnology, cement, consumer markets, healthcare, infrastructure, oil and gas, pharmaceuticals, real estate and infrastructure, steel, textiles, telecommunications, tourism and hospitality will attend the annual leadership conclave. We have lined up some of the most powerful voices on topics of tremendous significance on India Inc's complex issues. Indian Affairs is an independent platform that aims to ventilate the views of the common man through its magazine and digital version. It attempts to create a free mindset of opinions rather than following the chamchagiri of a select few unlike other media houses. Over the last years, Indian Affairs, the flagship media outfit of Network 7 Media Group, has exposed many in the government and those in gaddis who try to dictate their own terms and build their own pockets, ignoring the pockets of the Ahmadmi, who are the real interface of the mainstream. We don't intend to present a picture that is not true. We present facts, truth based on factual data rather than on painted pictures without any substance. We have a system which is so, which is so smothered with these people, we cannot escape out of it. Whether it is a ruling party, whether it is opposition party, whether it is someone else also. These are the people who do the same sort of activities. Indian Affairs fight is against those in power who have been continuously raping the federal structure of India with their financial muscle and divides us on the basis of caste, religion and creed and sometimes on presenting dramatic stories. While we are independent, unbiased and believe in fair journalism, our struggle continues to expose those who want to cut the million voices of India who rise to protest against their barbaric behavior and nepotism. We are candid on facts, simple on arithmetics, yet tough against power brokers. No matter how much opposition we face, our mindset becomes stronger and bolder. The theme of this year's conclave is Brand India, the emerging superpower, limitless leadership and limitless possibilities. India is poised to be the world's next superpower with sound and transparent financial system, 
We have a robust IT industry and a well-regulated stock market. It has been active politically and economically in the past decade as well. Its core institutions, from independent judiciary and free press to military, are secured by its more than half a century old roots. India is on the verge of becoming a permanent member of the United Nations Security Council. Its scientists are planning to launch a moon probe. By putting all these aspects together, one may be amazed that India is already in the race for becoming the next superpower. However, the question that comes to Indian Affairs mind as we interact with people is that of a mixed reaction which to some extent can't be underestimated. That is India a poor country or an emerging superpower? India along with China is the fastest emerging economy in the world. It is the fifth largest global economy looking from the purchasing power parity angle and its large domestic market kept it insulated from the recent depression in Western economies. A few years ago, Goldman Sachs predicted that India's GDP would overtake France and Italy by 2020, Germany, UK and Russia by 2025 and Japan by 2035, making it the third largest economy of the world behind the US and China. Most economists see India as an emerging economic superpower and expect it to play a major role in the global economy in the 21st century. Being an economic power makes a country a global power. But Indians should keep one thing in mind and that is that India has to compete with China. And from the looks of it now, China is deemed to be the winner. But India can move ahead. It has to develop its infrastructure and create an efficient and transparent administration. Communal distrust should be eliminated and so should be right-wing parties. If these problems can be taken into account and solved, then India can definitely join the global power elite. Indian Affairs main concern is how India will construct a sustainable and distinct identity that reflects the country's great diversity. We hope India will follow its own road and not simply create a facard resembling Western modernity. Throughout history, India has managed to absorb foreign elements into its culture and express them in its own language. I hope it will not lose this fantastic ability. We are concerned about India's future. The greatest problem in India is corruption and not population. The political field has become a real mafia. Political leaders, except a very few, think about accumulating wealth for themselves and their families. Bribing is a commonplace here and very little is being done to check it. When India glories in its shining, it does not take into account the vast majority of the villagers who live in absolute misery. Remember, 72% of India's population lives in rural areas. The evils that we see in India today, like corruption, public sector inefficiency, religious tensions, lack of development, poverty, illiteracy, poor infrastructure and shortages are caused by corrupt leadership that place their interests over the interests of the nation. Corruption is the root cause of India's backwardness. The damage caused by corruption on the country's economy and progress is unimaginable. Indian Affairs is thus creating a free flow of voices at the national and international seminars. The last decade has seen India emerge stronger on the world map, especially during the global financial meltdown when the country weathered the crisis much to the admiration of the world. India today has emerged as one of the decisive nations shaping the contours of the world economy. Consistently charting a growth path over the last few years, Brand India is an idea whose time has truly arrived. Today the triumph of Brand India is visible in almost all fields. With some aggressive cross-border acquisitions, India has been rewriting the global business equations. India has established its leadership in IT and knowledge-based industries globally and has the fastest growing population of workers and consumers. 
with huge investments in infrastructure development on the anvil. India today is a preferred investment destination. It has one of the world's most rapidly growing markets and today Indian products and services are recognized for their quality all over the world. 1.22 billion people is the second most populous country in the world while China is on the top with over 1.3 billion people. The figures show that India represents 17.31% of the world's population which means one out of every six people on this planet live in India. India is predicted to have more than 1.53 billion people by the end of 2030. More than 50% of India's current population is below the age of 25 and over 65% below the age of 35. This means the youth will form a majority chunk in decision making. The Indian economy has continuously recorded high growth rates and has become an attractive destination for investments. Today, India is among the most attractive destinations globally for investments and business and FDI has increased over the last few years. India's economic growth is expected to remain robust in 2012 and 2013. Despite likely headwind of double dip recessions in Europe and the US, according to a United Nations annual economic report, World Economic Situation and Prospects 2012, the Indian economy is expected to grow between 7.7% and 7.9% this year, as per the report. India is the second most preferred destination for foreign investors. The wealth of high net worth individuals HNIs, in India is set to grow by a compounded annual growth rate CAGR, of 23% over the next five years and will touch a staggering 249 trillion rupees or 5.5 trillion dollars. India's private sector accounts for 75% of its GDP. Private sector investments have responded rigorously to the government policy of promoting competition, removing policy distortions and hurdles and improving access to factors of production such as technology and capital. With the domestic industry developing an increasingly global focus, the Indian corporate sector has expanded capacity and upgraded technology. Simultaneously, it has been clocking higher sales and profits. The regulatory framework of India has made sweeping reforms in policies relating to virtually every sector of the economy, trade, industry, foreign investment, finance, taxation and public sector. These reforms have succeeded in large ways in achieving macroeconomic stabilization. The economy is now clearly on the path of global integration, accelerated growth, improved productivity, innovation and international competitiveness. This is Satya Brahma. What an extraordinary privilege it to me to chair the third annual India Leadership Conference and Business Leadership Awards, consequently for the three years. It has been a very memorable journey since last three years when we started our first conclave in Delhi wherein we highlighted the programs on resilient economy whether it will bounce back or not. At that time that Indian economy condition was in a very savvy position because of the global economy meltdown. We changed our focus in our Mumbai second annual event wherein we thought about uh, making the event taking it to the closer to the common admin. We made the event to connect to the people and give a theme, Aam Aadmi, Jiyan Roti, Kapada and Madha. It is very important to mention here that over the years, India has progressed tremendously now. It's a great pleasure to bring to you Indian Affairs third annual India Leadership Conclave and Indian Affairs Business Leadership Awards 2012. The theme of this conclave is Brand India, Limitless Leadership and Unlimited Opportunities. We'll also be talking about uh, the emergence of India as a major superpower in the coming days. To my mind, what has progressively changed India is the basic outlook. Dr. Manmohan Singh, when he was the finance minister, enunciated the liberalization reforms, which opened up a plethora of uh, opportunities to the global market. Many foreign players came to India, and India also emerged very strongly in the market. 
the license was and the protectionist policy of the Indian economy vanished. And we saw the increasing trade and commerce and bilateral trade between a lot of countries. India became known to major destinations of the world as one of the most preferred destinations. We are talking about India as a superpower. But to my mind, what is the main concern is that it's not the population which is increasing. We have a population of 1.2 billion actually. What is most important is the corruption, nepotism that is crippling the Indian thought process and the policy making process. We find many of the politicians and the policy makers are becoming the stumbling block and clashing with the interest with the intellectual class group. If I could take back to your memory when India started its uh, journey of uh, economic liberalization, we found out many reforms wherein many companies grew up. Many Indian brands became a big brands, global brands. There was a time when people thought that think local and act like a global man. This is what has happened actually. And the biggest issue that is confronting India today is the foreign regulations, the foreign direct investments, Chamber of Commerce, Economy, and the issues that are concerning the common man. India virtually actually live in villages. 70% of Indian population live in villages. And these people earn less than 20 rupees a day. So I would like to bring to your attention here that when you talk about the brand India, emergence of a superpower, we cannot underestimate the fact that India has emerged out to be a strong superpower in the tier 1 and tier 2 cities. But if you look at India in the rural parts of the country, you will find that these people do not have basic access to health. Many companies do concentrate on the areas where they find it profitable. I think this trend should change. We also must change the outlook of this uh, attitude of these businessmen who are trying to drive this globe. Let us have a combined effort. Let us concentrate on public and private partnership. Let us think about globalization. Let us think about domestic uh, issues. Let us also think about the issues that can bring revolutionary changes for branding India in the world. Right? In Western countries and in the European countries, you will find many of the brands have become bigger. It is primarily because of the outlook. In India, as I told earlier, population is not the issue. Corruption is the issue and second to that is the literacy rate. Too many people of India are not literate. Just to tell you that 65% of Indian population do come from young ages actually. They are actually the future leaders of India. We must think about them actually. We cannot simply uh, underestimate these people. Government also should think very clearly that when they give money to the state governments and the various uh, developmental agencies, that it goes to the right direction. But unfortunately in India, the politicians must save the money and it doesn't reach to the common people. The common people suffer. This becomes richer. The poor becomes poorer. So what is the solution? Do we have a choice? Yes, we do have a choice. We have to think very forward-looking way. We must also think public-private partnership is going to play a very critical role in the coming days. We have seen the increasing number of players coming to India and establishing their presence, mainly because they found out India as one of the most preferred destinations for foreign direct investment. You might have seen for the last uh, few months in various newspaper channels and contemporary times that there has been a taboo on the foreign direct investment. Aviation sector has taken a beating. So also some of the factors. It is not because of the faulty programs of the government. It is mainly because of the forward-looking approach. The approach lies with the policy makers. The approach lies with this intellectual class of the society. They must combine, they must come together and sit, sit across and discuss. Look, these are the issues which we must resolve. If we cannot resolve these issues, it is not going to go. So let us stop fighting, let us stop quarreling, let us stop uh, giving uh, all sort of uh, abuses to each other. We are not going to solve these issues. We can solve the issues only when there is an amicable solution. Another issues that is currently grippling India's country is terrorism, cross-border terrorism. The emergence of terror groups in various, in various countries of the world are posing a serious challenges. Look at Afghanistan. Look at Pakistan. Look at Taliban. Look at Iran. Look at Syria. Political turmoil is all over the world. 
the global condition to my mind is not that conducive what it should have been actually it is primarily because of the emergence of these terrorist groups which is trying to destabilize the world peace and india must increasingly play a very positive role in combining all these developed nations in bringing together there one of the good news is that india is going to get a permanent seat in the united nations as you know that uh, india is second only to china in terms of population so we have a huge resources our cultural heritage is very huge and we have a tradition of uh, tradition of glorious past wherein we boast of lot of religious scripts india is the only one country in the world where you'll find multiple caste creeds religions sectarians all sort of people are there you cannot find it anywhere in the world this is one of the uniqueness of indian culture and there lies our the real heart the heart should come out we must not forget that we foster the indians and we must think like indians this has precisely happened in the last 2 to 3 years indians have achieved a lot of activities they have immensely contributed to the growth of the indian economy and indian economy is today the seventh largest economy in the world and look at where we are heading for look at the innovations where we are doing it we have some of the biggest names to our credit look at ambani's look at birlas look at ruyas look at tatas but i would like to point out here that put beside these people let us bring some sme inspector also we have some of the companies who have been doing some enormous business and real creative innovations but they have not been coming to the forefront mainly because they probably they do not have that much of expertise and resources wherein government should step in research and development is very low in india it's very surprising it is very low in india government should must give impetus to these companies to come forward and bring into the focus now it is irony that india today cannot even manufacture a simple calculator it is not that we can't do it but we import it from china why we can do it ourselves but it's not that we don't have any resources we have the resources we should have the will power ladies and gentlemen it's a proud moment for me to address you at third annual india leadership conclave on a topic that concerns to most of the indians and to me as the chairman of the third annual india leadership conclave on brand india the emerging superpower i'm sure in coming days maybe in 2020 as someone has pointed out india is going to be the big global player and it will establish its foothold in the world market as it has been in the past thank you very much to be the part of this uh, moment of occasion at third annual india leadership conclave and i hope this evening is going to be much more fruitful for you where you interact with lot of leaders here today thank you very much